Johnny Douglas here. Uh, today I want to demonstrate downloading and installing and configuring the Georgia Software's Universal Terminal Server. So we'll click Downloads. So scroll down. We're going to choose 64-bit. While that's downloading, we're going to create a folder. We'll call it GSW. Now we'll move the folder. We'll close this. We'll extract the files. And scroll down to find the setup file. We'll right click, choose run as administrator, click continue, continue and continue. Georgia software successfully installed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create some users. These local users will be used for the scanners. Now you could use domain users if you wanted to. So we're essentially running server manager. We're expanding configuration, local users and groups, and users. We'll call it RF user. Give it a password. Now we're going to deselect user must change password. We'll select cannot change password and we'll select password never expires. I'm going to add another user for administering Georgia Softworks using session administrator. I'm going to call it GS admin. close this. Now while we're here, uh, I want to add that GS admin to the GWTN monitors group. So we'll double click GWTN monitors, click add. We're going to change the location since it's a local user to the computer name and then put in the username. Check names. Found it, OK, apply, and we're done. Now one more thing that we need to do is go to Control Panel. Uh, I use the icon views, so we'll select an administrator. What Local security policy, local policies, user rights assignments. The users must have allow log on locally writes. Now, since users, the group users, is already listed, we don't need to do anything here. If that was missing, we would need to add those users to this group so that they could authenticate with Windows. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to right-click on Georgia Software's UTS Programs Group. Choose Open. And we're going to run the UTS Configuration Tool. What we're going to do now is we're going to set up some automatic logon uh, for testing. We're going to set one for the 
GSW clients. I'm going to use the loopback address. And we need to put a period there for a domain placeholder. Put in the username and password. Next, we want to do some testing with third party clients later. So we're going to configure this. When you're using both files, you cannot have any overlapping IP addresses. One of the things you can do if you're only using one file and you want to, you can actually wildcard it and put in the information. But since the wildcard would also include 127 range, we can't do that. So what we'll do is we'll do 192 dot star dot star dot star. Save it. So next what we want to do is set up a default configuration. So if we click and expand this, you can see there's no default configuration set. So we're going to select the user per session. I'm going to right click and choose create default configuration. We'll expand the default configuration and we'll choose emulation. We will set the emulation to VT220 or we'll use UTF-8. And we'll use color. We'll click apply. Next, we will configure for session saver. And we'll set the timeout to 60 minutes. Now, what you'll notice is there is a description over on, the, on all of these that kind of tells you what these are used for. And for our purpose, uh, we're going to use Session Saver. Next, we want to configure to launch an application. So we're going to the logon script. I'm going to edit it. Now, I have installed a program called FAR on this computer, and we'll go get the path for it and insert it in the file. Copy the location. And because you have program space files in here, we, when we put this in the file, we will need to encapsulate it with quotes. And one of the things that we like to do is verify that our launch command for our application will work in a Windows command prompt. So we're going to just copy that, open up a Windows command prompt, paste, paste it in, and hit enter, and it works. It launches far. So we know we have a working configuration file, log on script, we'll save it. Next, what we'll do is we'll create a user. I'll select local users, add user. When we expand that and we look at the logon script, we can see that it did inherit the settings from the default configuration. We may want to use a domain user. So we'll right click on domains, choose add domain. Enter the domain name. And then we may want to add a domain user. So we'll select the domain name, right click, and add user. So now we have users created. Log on scripts that will launch an application. 
We'll close this tool. Next, we'll configure a Telnet client to uh, launch automatically the logon script. So we'll right click it, choose edit. And the dash A for automatic logon, dash H and put in for the host and put in 127.0.0.1. We'll save the file. Close it. Now before we launch our Telnet client, we want to run session administrator. If your user account was added after you had logged in uh, to that GWTN monitors group, you will need to log out of Windows and log back in to get the rights to run this utility. Once you launch the utility, you can now monitor a, a connection that comes in. And you can see that it's gotten connected. Now I want to uh, demonstrate one thing for you is the session saver that we had talked about. So what we'll do is we'll make the FAR utility go to a different screen. Now we want to cause an abnormal disconnect, which would be sort of like going outside the range of the wireless. We're just going to click the X. And you can see that the session got suspended. So now we're going to come back in And notice that when it came in, we were returned to the menu that we were on. The next thing that I want to demonstrate is with Session Administrator, if you select a, a user, you can hit Enter and you can monitor the session. So. What we'll do now is we'll hit escape to get back out of that. And I'll use this drop down so you can see some of the things that you can do. You can do monitor, shadow, terminate. Uh, you can view details. Gives you a little more information about the connection. And if you shadow it, you can actually change or control the screen. Notice that cl clicking on that option changed it. So you can kind of take control if you need to. The other thing you can do is you can exit the application. Now you'll notice that even though you, we exited the application, the Telnet connection stayed open. And I'm going to show you why that happens. When you're looking at the logon script for the user, this k underscore start dot bat again, uh, we're going to change that to a c underscore. A k will keep the file open after the application closes. If we change it to a c start, the file will close after the application closes. We're just going to exit out of this session. And to get out of a shadow mode, you do a control Z or, and that'll take you back out. So we're going to launch a telnet session again. And this time when we quit, we'll see that it closes that the Telnet session after the application closes. And the Telnet session is gone and we're disconnecting. Well, that concludes this demonstration. If you have any questions, uh, you can contact us at support at georgiasoftworks.com. Thank you.